Hey everyone, welcome to another time lapse recording of the Timaeus battle suit that I did a while back. I have a little bit of time and uh, decided to put uh, everything together and also recording audio, um, I, which I thought would be fun to do. Uh, usually in the past, I just left everything blank or added some random music to it. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna talk a little bit, comment on the on on the workflow that I'm doing, um, and explore some other themes about design and art and life. And yeah, let's see how it goes. Tell me, tell me what you think about it. Tell me if you think this is useful. And um, hopefully, we'll do more of that in the future. Okay, let's get into it. So starting out, I'm using a preset of a base figure that I created in the past and out of it I will extract a skeleton um, just uh, general masses of ribcage, pelvis, skull and upper parts of the arm and leg and after that I will be modeling uh, or rather sculpting uh, armor uh, above that uh, and it's gonna be like a mix between um, exposed skeleton and um, the armor which i thought would be fun to to explore a few thoughts on using presets versus starting from scratch i think there's time and place for both i think both have their advantages and disadvantages one thing would be time right presets save time it's good for client work uh, but then starting from scratch it might be a good opportunity uh, if you're doing personal work or if you're learning to practice the anatomy to practice the proportions so it's an option um, one thing to be careful and considerate about um, is also the attitude of the figure that you get just in terms of uh, proportion um, you know is it seven head figure eight head figure 12 head figure all this can affect the final design also style is it more stylized is it um, very realistic how muscular it is right all these options um, can affect the final uh, the final output and um, it's good to have it to keep it in mind now starting with a preset will give you the ability to modify it but then perhaps it can also kind of lock you in and um, pushes you away from exploration which i think starting from scratch will really promote you can create something fresh something unique um, so yeah just options and pick what pick, pick what you want and yeah i would say don't shy away from sculpting your own figure uh, it might seem like a daunting task but you can do it like you can really do it and you can do it really good uh, it just takes time and some patience um, and you can really express what you want to express with that figure it, like just the base figure and even if it is a hard surface design that base will will tell a story its own story um, i love referencing um, just in terms of um, proportion and style i love looking at bridgman I think he has really he really exaggerates um, forms of uh, uh, like basic forms of uh, the anatomy he mm, simplifies it in this uh, blocky uh, blocky shapes and it looks really mechanical it, look, it looks like a robot uh, which is find really cool um, and then I love looking at uh, jeff watts um, he's another figure drawing instructor um, just the amount of expression and style and 
energy his um, sketches have um, and the third would be uh, Russian academic drawings uh, which are very very realistic um, and it brings this other vibe to mm, to the figure um, but there's still some sort of um, abstraction happening which is cool uh, and by the way about Jeff Watts um, that's one thing that he does is he abstracts uh, the figure a lot um, he has like few few option few options it's a um, cuboid it's a ovoid and uh, i think he has like a spider-man um, abstraction and yeah these are all options um, for you to use um, to represent what the human body is um, which I find super cool for um, later down the road uh, doing uh, sci-fi characters uh, just looking at those abstractions it, they all feel robotic uh, in a way and um, which you can use for armor design and um, further develop it and uh, yeah um, and one one method that he also uses is uh, Riley's method, which is like a like a net wrapped on the um, um, on the figure, uh, and all those rhythms can can influence and and help you understand what type of design is natural on top of uh, the human figure. Uh, so yeah if you're into that i would recommend studying uh, studying it um, just drawing or sculpting both work uh, drawing is a lot faster right you can fail a lot faster so you might get to um, improve you get to improve faster as well and this this thing goes for looking at it figure drawing as a design exercise not only as a figure drawing exercise for figures but also designing those lines and those shapes and those proportions to be to be pleasing um, which i find translate immediately into uh, sci-fi designs or anything really um, yeah you just develop your eye and your um, muscle memory for what's good looking because looking at a human figure you will immediately know um, immediately know if something is is off so you need to be sharp and on on point and um, yeah find it excellent excellent way to to for practice But of course, uh, there's more to it. It's not just, um, not everything is just anatomy, right? There's, uh, there's gear, there's uh, different gear from different units, from different cultures and different time. Uh, you can look at medieval knights and find inspiration there. You can look at gear from police from military units uh, firefighters there are many options and anatomy and human body is just one of the options and one that i feel like i prefer the most uh, and gravitates most naturally towards i love studying it mm. well yeah Others, others are cool as well. So, so here I'm just refining the armor parts, uh, the basics of skeleton were al already placed in. Sometimes these armor shapes come quite hard to you. Sometimes it takes time to find what's pleasing. Sometimes you fight it a lot, other times it's just very natural. 
and you find something that works really fast. And yeah, I split the armor apart. Um, thought it would be cool to have this exposed look um, and further develop the interior side. And because it's split in the middle, uh, it gets artificial really quick. So uh, later on, I added uh, this bolts and mechanical parts on the edge so it looks like uh, it can fit together have a function and uh, some form of use maybe i can also talk a little bit about um, initial brief that i created before starting uh, with the work which is something i usually like to do is write words explaining what I'm the idea and if it works on paper then I know there's a great chance it will work as an artwork visually for some reason um, those two connect really well for me mm, just I guess the idea is when you read the description it sounds exciting to you uh, so for this one it was damaged android battle armor uh, which were remains of a powerful warrior Timaeus with exposed inner skeleton mm. I wanted to design just the torso and the skull part mm. so it could be used like a prop inside of a room uh, with these uh, remains and I wanted a little bit more divine but dark mood it's like a interesting mix uh, with purple armor um, which could be a sign of royalty and tech elements like carbon fiber materials steel and then gold to further embellish the divine aspect Lately I've been doing a lot more writing in my free time and I can see how deepening the story part deepens and adds more meaning and enriches your designs. So for personal work for longest time I've been purely focusing on the visual design principles just focusing on shape form trying to find interesting uh, combination interesting composition but yeah it's the it's the story that adds further meaning and further depth especially when it comes to characters i think they need that and yeah when it fits into a story and is sort of uh, perhaps even philosophically defined what this character is uh, based on certain philosophy it shapes it shapes the it shapes the whole design which somehow i thought would be a lot more um, present in client work but oftentimes i'm doing just shape stuff to make it look cool <laughs> which is fine i enjoy that it's almost like a mathematical thing uh, but yeah with, with story with deep story or deep characterization it deepens the design as well and um, yeah i just wanted to mention that another great inspiration for art for me is music listening to music and for this particular artwork um, it was a uh, black metal band called batushka i think that's how they're pronounced it's a polish band and they have a mix so of black metal sound with religious ceremony i think it's from orthodox christianity but then the lyrics I believe are more um, a little bit twisted 
and not completely religious so it's not a christian band like it's a weird mix but just the emotional part that i listen to um, works so well together perhaps because it is in the darkest times that human mind is open to the divine more easily because before we hope we have all those preconceptions of what that is and we push it away but yeah it's in the dark times that all unessential fades away you don't care about daily problems you don't care about uh, none of that it's the suffering and perhaps yeah perhaps it's with pain that that happens i don't know <laughs> just just thoughts but yeah it was batushka um for this artwork and this mix of divine and darkness let's check where we are with the artwork so yeah i added this hydraulic part to the neck um, somehow i find it fun every time <laughs> to have a hydraulic there but yeah and then the muscles that overlap it could be sort of pushing the whole thing underneath i don't know i don't know if it even works but yeah it was just an idea and um uh, would need to test it out a bit more now sculpting the lower part of the leg uh, checking with the base to keep it in proportion scaling down and um, I believe I will be adding Collarson which I started doing more lately I find it super helpful and have clear shapes uh, and material separations from the start and it's really easy to do it in ZBrush uh, you just fill the layer with one color and then um, do the poly paint you put hotkey on your um, RGB brush and yeah it, it's fast you can modify it on the go you can overpaint it uh, change composition and it works as a additional design element it's not just shape and form of the mesh yeah but it's also materials uh, and yeah i find it really really helpful would recommend to anybody um, so i said it's gonna be purple but <laughs> still i wanted to try some different options maybe black maybe red maybe green but yeah and yeah with color color has a um, depth of its own and emotion of its own and there's certainly a lot that i can learn in that aspect as well perhaps designing a, instead of doing like this monochromatic designs maybe with two primary colors stuff like that um, adding different contrasts and because the color is relative to what uh, the surrounding colors are yeah i think i think it has quite a lot of depth to it as well like i haven't explored enough to to um to really <laughs> to even know what to talk about about it uh, or for example if you look at the um, racing cars and all the livery designs yeah same could be done here there's a wide variety of potential out there so i'm sort of coming towards the end of the initial blockout uh, shapes and forms are sort of getting defined and in place and won't change much later on uh, 
and at this point there's always a question of how far do you want to take your block outs so right now i'm like what 20 minutes in and it's four times speed so roughly hour hour and a half for this it could be it could be a little bit faster even maybe between yeah like 30 minutes to one hour 45 minutes um, and you could leave it here and go in sub d and start polishing or there's another path when which i'm taking these days a lot more is continue staying in zbrush and continue with ref not refinement but further blocking out of design till the very small detail right it's uh, if i would stop here it would be mostly big and medium shapes and forms that would be in place there's not much small forms uh, so it's a it's a decision and i'm not sure which one is better and even if one is better than the other um yeah because i've been thinking so mike for example i know he mentioned uh one time that he uh, prefers taking designs in ZBrush even to like 70 or 80 percent of the final and then for the final 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 polish he he would go sub D uh, to really have a crisp and clean mesh in the end um, but then there's yeah the other option where you where you we do just rough gestures and you leave it there and you there's a lot still unsolved but if you can do it in sub d then perhaps uh, perhaps more interesting or even um, i don't know like cleaner coming faster to the cleaner result yeah but you lose with sub d you lose uh, the flexibility of zbrush that zbrush offers that sculpting offers in zbrush you can really pl play with your design for a long long time so maybe maybe it's about how how clear you are where the path is leading with this particular design maybe it's about that i would need to test this more um, yeah I, I added another layer inside the armor now with this uh, steel gray uh, gray paint which is always nice to see i think on the shell uh, arm shell having two layers the paint outside and like a stronger material inside you have a few more thoughts on the whole um, exploration versus execution i think it encompasses a lot of aspects when you're working on it so part of it is design right uh, i mean software uh, zbrush versus sub d which is like a technical approach but it also changes the mindset that you use when you're in zbrush uh, okay so back to the artwork uh, i'm just doing a quick overview of the block out and you see here pretty much that's it like it won't change much more uh, until the end the only thing that's gonna really get added is uh, the smaller forms and a, a bit more sharper higher resolution and uh, more detail 
Yeah, I think I'll start polishing the skeleton and then transition to armor. So you see, if I had a preset of a skull, this part wouldn't really be necessary. I, it would require minimal, um, minimal detailing. And I think it would be smarter move for this. So yeah, anyway, back to the exploration versus execution idea. ZBrush lets you explore a lot. But then on the other hand, going into Subdi or even CAD perhaps uh, forces you to execute, especially if you're working in software like Maya or Moi3D that don't have modifiers and history of specific parts you sort of have to commit to each step that you're making and it's like a constant movement forward you're just moving forward moving forward and it reminds me of um, Musashi uh, book in, in his book uh, book of five rings he's uh, so for anyone who doesn't know Musashi was um, a samurai warrior with a crazy duel record. I think he won like 40 or 50 duels and never lost. And those were fights still death. And then in all the years, he writes a book about uh, training and about his approach. And in one of his methods, he's describing how to cut the opponent um, he calls it um, no design no conception and the idea is you only focus on the cut there's nothing else and you give everything into that single cut to uh, defeat the enemy it's like a mindset thing where you use your body he says use your body use your spirit in or, or strike from strike with your whole body strike from with your spirit and strike from the void it's like taking the whole universe <laughs> into that strike and just thinking about the cut till the end and yeah it reminds me with sub d approach or with going quickly into sub d or cad uh, it sort of resembles that idea of just giving it all into one push uh, there's no wiggle room there's no left and right and trying different option it's just one way one cut one cut kill uh insta giving <laughs> insta giving your designs uh yeah that was a uh, cool connection uh, so yeah I don't, I don't know what's what's better what's worse it's two different paths that you can choose the different options uh, perhaps for client work uh, this execution mindset is better because they usually they want stuff quickly but then okay if they allow you to explore go explore and for personal you can certainly explore or test yourself with speed and um, efficiency and really see where your design is yeah i think that's when when you don't have time to explore your design sort of forces you to see where you are maybe <laughs> i don't know if this is true yeah because it, sometimes it takes time to find a design but other times it comes as you push and move forward. And even if it's not perfect, it's okay because you're always gonna create next artwork and next iteration. And perhaps that one, previous one served as a learning purpose. You moved, pushed through it and another one's gonna be better. And looking down the road, one year, two years, five years, you're gonna grow and that's what matters in the end is moving forward and taking action. So Skull is sort of getting there right now. I'm starting to add some details. Um, 
it has higher resolution and um, yeah all the parts are sort of refined and now it's just st starting to play around with um, <clears throat> what kind of um, sci-fi impression can I add into the mesh um, to convey that it's not um, uh, a human skull, skull but uh, artificial so uh, adding some um, uh, separate separation lines cut lines uh, some bolts and uh, while, while still trying to refine the um, the overall structure of the skull it's not perfect right and um, if you spot a mistake just modify it tweak it move forward um, so uh, yeah I'm just trying different alphas um, from uh, like I have a couple of sets and uh, always just trying around playing see what I can get and not just using alpha a single alpha but you can use the alpha and add around it and build around it so it's not completely generic um, but other times <coughs> yeah I just place it and it works refining the teeth um, I thought they were perhaps a little bit poorly arranged but So here I'm trying to echo further uh, the shape of the skull and some of the lines and um, some of the some of the um, echoing of the skull on the helmet, um, which is um, which I thought would be fun to do, and as well as um, uh, reinforce this. Uh, divine but dark feeling and soon I will be also adding <coughs> the gold material um, which now looking back I think I could develop further maybe add some uh, runes or some sort of uh, religious text uh, going over it but yeah A big part of the refinement, um, further refinement of the um, of the blockout that you have from before is um, checking your edges and making sharp um, sharp shapes, so it's not all wobbly and um, uh, like it looks inflated and the, the light wouldn't really catch. Uh, so yeah, just paying attention to the to the edges and sharpening them up and uh, making <clears throat> making clean um, clean forms and clean shapes that make sense, while always keeping in mind the overall composition, the overall flow, the gesture, like this part um, gets quite. I mean it takes practice to get good at it uh, because at first at first you don't even know what you should be doing because you don't have intuition built yet for what's pleasing and what's not and it's actually always a fight finding this but the more you do it the easier it gets uh, so yeah what I would recommend um, is it, like if you haven't done that yet and you want to do hard surface design check Alex Senhal 
Gumroad uh, on visual design principles. I think it's excellent information on this, uh, as well as uh, Joe Peterson Gumroad with tech tips. Uh, he has like a series of these. Those really helped me reveal um, how to look at design. And it has this um, almost mathematical feeling to it. We are trying to find the best composition possible for a particular arrangement. Uh, and it, yeah, like it has a lot to do with uh, certain principles like big, medium, small, pattern, hierarchy, grouping, and so on. Depth, adding depth to your um, to your designs, and all these principles need to be. I found out at the start they have to be consciously, consciously um, focused on, uh, and then at some point, like, and what I mean consciously focused on is actually thinking about it. Every action that you make you ask yourself how does this relate to that principle how does it relate to the other principle or you could just focus on one principle for um, the entire art piece that you're making uh, and see where that gets you and then the more you do it yeah the more intuitive it gets and you improve uh, and this is the part where you're problem solving your designs you're looking at it evaluating it what's working what's not working why is it working why is it not working uh, while exploring different um, different options playing around uh, keeping an open mind to to the possibilities and uh, yeah especially in zbrush like we talked before you can explore a lot build a lot but then there's also a catch with this um, you might get lost in uh, exploration and never commit to what you're doing or always have a negative outlook on the art piece which like you could look at it negatively but it's actually fine it works so sometimes stepping away and looking back at it next day makes you realize that it's not so bad uh, because a lot of these judgments um, depend on our mood as well if you're feeling down and you're making art piece probably you're gonna be more judgmental and uh, not uh, like quicker to judge um, your creation while if you keep good mood yeah maybe maybe you just uh, flow better and probably also it's with good mood that um, art comes well I guess it depends it depends what you're doing perhaps <laughs> perhaps you can be bad mood and create uh, like this dark artwork I don't know although I, I don't I wasn't I wasn't in a dark mood for this one was a happy time <laughs> so yeah I don't know how that works so yeah I added I added um, the gold pass which I'll be um, spreading around the armor as well uh, right now just playing with some different ideas perhaps adding some patterns on uh, on the helmet um, refining refining the shapes you see you can sometimes you can just paint um, you can paint material in while keeping geometry intact and it already creates um, a nice a nice um, a nice clear shape what there should be and after you add some depth uh, some cut lines to it um, it already feels like a separate piece it's not perfect but um, 
the eye knows what's happening there. So I extracted the shoulder pad, refining the back. Here I'm paying attention to the scapula rhythms and muscles of the back, um, refining the ribcage part in the front, the rhythm that you get from the ribs and, and abs, ab muscles attaching there. Yeah, I was thinking of adding some pieces of the armor on the other side. Uh, I was thinking about shoulder pad, about this strap. Yeah, now extracting the um, this rhythm of the oblique muscles. I thought it would be cool covering up um, the internal ribs, but keeping it separate from the rest of the armor. And yeah, just flowing around. I um, I like to flow around my um, art piece, looking at it, evaluating it. Um, you now adding some kid bash parts from Vitali with this uh, hyd hydraulic. It was just a quick uh, quick solution. No need to model a new one for this case. And now I'm gonna focus on the rib catch and separate um, the main parts, which is um, this, um, how is it called? Is it sternum? I don't know. Uh, the middle of the rib cage, and then uh, all the ribs, uh, separate all the ribs and add thickness. And then on top, uh, add some sci-fi details. Um, so yeah, this, this uh, this part takes a little bit of time and like with the skull I could have had a preset and would be a lot quicker uh, but it is what it is so now I'm just um, trying to arrange into a nice flowy um, composition um, and yeah it's all very simple just mask out the ribs um, arrange arrange the um, overall composition and add thickness to it and that's it uh, one good thing to play around with uh, with ribs is how they attach i should have paid a little better attention to that i think uh, i was kind of uh, rushing it through but yeah it is what it is and i have i have reference images for uh, for for the anatomy here i have the um medical book with um, all the parts and um, so it's a lot it, it's easier to um, to quickly check how things are supposed to work and um, yeah constantly keeping that in mind now I'm adding some negative uh, some depth uh, or some space inside the armor for the ribs to see the ribs inside and the pelvis jumping back to the skull doing some further refinements you can really play with expression in this um, in this part uh, try to find something that works uh, perhaps adding some asymmetry to your skull or to your design it's always a good option uh, yeah I should totally do that more uh, play with asymmetry I think there's a lot to you could be able to do and doing that uh, would further um, further emphasize the artificial uh, nature of the character so that's always cool uh, one good thing to do with your 
uh, forms that you create is adding like these edges um, not sure if you can see um, just elevating um, elevating the edges of the form so the light can catch uh, instead of keeping it um, just a flat form or like here I'm adding some through the middle or around the uh, attachment of the uh, of the hydraulic part yeah, and it just creates more interesting um, more interesting form and then after you have these forms you can build um, further detail mechanical detail around it um, so it's it's like you add information to, to your form and then um, you have something to work with and you can further design um, and play around with details, add details around that. So it's not just scattered all over the place, but it has some sort of uh, movement to it. And always keeping in mind um, the composition that you're doing with your details. Uh, I'm probably... Um, I'm, sometimes I'm detailing too much for the sake of detailing. I still have to uh, hold my, myself back and keep more room for uh, eye to rest, for rest areas. Uh, but yeah. Um, now further um, smoothing out the ribs I'm not sure if I will be creating one and duplicating it uh, or is it if I go one by one we will see I'm adding some separation cut line on the edge um, some attachment points so here I feel like I probably over detailed I don't know um, the middle part yeah trying to a good a good question would be always uh, would be always to ask if what's the simplest way to convey the design and if it works no need to no need to um, no need to over detail or make it over complex if it works it works And yeah, I often find um, it's the simple solutions that are most uh, pleasing to look at, most natural. But it's also fun to play with complexity and um, see how far you can go, so how far you can push it. Uh, Mike, for me, did really well with that. Um, he just went crazy <laughs> with his just forms and shapes and somehow made it work in the end and even if designs are a bit like uh, out, out there maybe a bit weird or um, crazy crazy forms it's still a fun way to go about it find something new and then once you do the um, more more grounded designs you have more ammunition uh, in your backpack to to um, to find something new, uh, but still keeping it grounded. So yeah, now this part of the ribs, I think the flow is so different compared to the upper ones. I um, I'm just gonna go one by one. 
and not duplicate those but focus on uh, focus on these and do the same steps at um, thickness and um, yeah because thickness is um, because the form is uh, kind of flat I'm adding a little bit of uh, roundness to it by sculpting this uh, with uh, clay brush and then going over with the flat one and um, sort of getting <coughs> this in between uh, in, in between look I recently listened to Rick Rubin's audiobook um, and some of the podcasts and found it really interesting the way he looks at um, creating art uh, by the way if you don't know him he's a music producer worked with a lot of famous bands uh, helping them create art uh, and yeah just his methods and the way he views it um, seems really really interesting he has this uh, Eastern look to it, Eastern vibe. Mm, the main thing that I got out of it was um, his idea of being an antenna for art to come to you. So instead of looking at your art as something that you create, it is something that comes to you something that is given it's a it comes the idea comes from <laughs> somewhere out there from the space in your mind and if your antenna is tuned to the frequency because like idea ideas pop in your head out of nowhere so we yeah, are really paying attention to that aspect when something grabs your attention or you get an idea oh this would be cool to act on it and to to um, uh, to work with it, um, especially if it grips you. So and sometimes this can happen naturally. Um, just you do, you live your life and you live your day, and ideas just come. And some are more tuned into that, others less. And I feel like it's like a state of mind you can sort of get yourself in there uh, where you're um, yeah just exploring and thinking um, about possibilities and really being non-judgmental about it and sort of flowing and accepting uh, accepting it and uh, yeah seems useful for art uh, especially when you're in the early stages um, of creating your artwork and really letting yourself to explore i don't do that enough so i i am more of a because he, he was talking about crafting versus um, exploring it's sort of this um, i guess it goes back to the to the execution versus uh, uh, exploration that I was talking about um, yeah how much how much do you let yourself explore and when do you when do you put a craftsman um, head a uh, hat on your head and uh, and and begin to edit and I I start crafting and editing i feel like way way too early or naturally gravitate towards that where i sort of have a feeling of what my artwork will be and then i just try to execute it as fast as possible to get the final result which is good to have but then perhaps limiting and um, there could be more more possibilities 
uh, to explore, to find, to develop. Uh, so it just depends where your personality is. And uh, yeah, this state of exploration, so with ZBrush, ZBrush is a good environment for that, right? But then I found myself being that state if I drive a car, for example, and I'm alone in the car, um, my mind really, really starts to explore because it's just, it's there's just enough amount of attention that you need to pay on the road, but you can sort of do it automatically. And yeah, the mind just starts drifting and thinking uh, various stuff and you can sort of navigate it uh, at that point and it's the same thing happens with art when um when you have your artwork in place uh, you sort of know where to go how to finish it but you just need to do the work so you're moving your your hand your hands are doing the work but the mind the mind is free to do contemplation and uh, and, and, and exploration and you can just think and many times I find myself in that state it depends if if the design is really hard and I'm trying to really really push then I could be focusing on every single step like that I, I like being in that state but it's hard to maintain it every day of the week um, yeah, the danger is to burn out because it's really, it really pressures you to perform all the time and push, push, push. Um, so yeah, just mixing those two, um, the intensity, how much, how hard do you go, and not, and at the same time not slacking too much, right? Because you could easily be just flowing around, sort of spinning your viewport around and <laughs> not doing anything. Perhaps that's good. Uh, on some days, other days, um, gotta push. Um, and perhaps push a little bit more than the float around, right? Just to, um, just to keep the discipline. And uh, yeah, another activity running running does that as well or walking when exercise in general i find very beneficial for your mind body of course benefits uh, with with um with stress with uh, building stamina um, yeah but also the mind uh, clearing your mind and having a little bit of suffering in the day puts uh, everything else into a perspective and um, detaches you a bit and see the day for what it is see the problems for what they are and um, often oftentimes you find yourself there not that big of a problems at all i like how um, in ancient greece people saw physical exercise as a form of wisdom because nowadays I feel like well there's plenty plenty of people pushing the importance of physical exercise but I think there are still a lot of people who sort of look down on it and find it as something that is primitive and not like they value the intelligence and the mind way above physical activity where I think it's physical activity that sort of opens up the wis some of the wisdom of life you can find it there uh, because it's a struggle it's a physical struggle and yeah it's just a Pain, pain is. Pain feels very real when it's there. There's no arguing against it. And I think 
s there's truth connected to that and the self-talk gets really clear when you're doing something hard physically hard the mind usually starts to try and find a way out body as well everything is screaming to stop or trying to trick you that <laughs> this is not the way hey let's stop not today i'm tired i'm this hurts that hurts you're gonna injure yourself uh maybe maybe just today we'll do it tomorrow like all these things come in and the way you're able to deal with those negative uh, views it's really in the self-talk that that sort of can turn around all of that so just going into the into the pain and into the into the struggle and finding a way to keep going seems super beneficial to me it's and it's the same thing happens with art and design you're uh, struggling with design and it's not working so what are you gonna quit it's fine to detach if you need that but then perhaps that's the exact moment where you should be pushing and finding a solution and moving forward and not giving up and it's not just art and running then it's also life there's so many situations that we face that that are struggle and giving up sometimes it's a wise decision other times pushing forward is the way to go so yeah keeping a rational rational judgment about it as well uh, so yeah it's not it's not all just push but at the same time at the same time you also don't want to be a quitter right there is a balance there's always a balance finding a harmony finding a harmony in design <laughs> that's what we're doing yeah i find i find um, this aspect quite uh, interesting the duality that appears uh, that appears in life the like if we check harmony in design there's unity and there's chaos and if it's too much unity if if, it, if there's too much order the design gets boring but if there's too much variety too much chaos then we can't make sense out of it so finding a big balance between where you keep where you keep the design sort of trying to make sense but adding just enough just enough spice and and uh, variety to keep it interesting and to let the viewer guess and ask yourself what is that the same appears in life really everywhere night and day hot and cold life and death love and hate there's always this unity of the opposites and everything is in a constant flow of change and time and we're changing every day every day you're a little bit different and looking at least for me looking back 10 years i don't even recognize myself who was that guy <laughs> there's been there's been so much sh so much change over the years and life surprises us but judging it to be good or evil or good or bad it's uh, yeah it's uh, i feel like it's a uh, dangerous road to to, to walk um, a lot of things that happen that change like illness or or suffering or or some bad event happens in 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 the world we may 
a lot of time we may question it why why is it necessary there's i feel like there's always a lesson to be extracted out of it in the end looking back perhaps it makes it even makes sense and it feels like it had to happen it had to happen at that time precisely at that time but sometimes we don't see it and sometimes it can be too much and sometimes it can be too cruel and yeah those those are hard to accept but at the same time the world is changing you're changing the universe is changing i still believe there's um not everything is relative there are certain absolutes that you can find certain truths certain wisdom that holds no matter what but yeah that's just my view um and different people have different perspectives on life different different um different they take different positions and that's fine as long as as long as you're able to keep an open mind to the opposite um, view and try to find a common point and sometimes there's no common point and that's okay other times uh, those two can grow and uh, push each other and develop each other because we're so ignorant of so many things we and <laughs> we are so preoccupied with ourselves uh, it's the ego we are the center center of the universe <laughs> Uh, it's crazy but ego is not all bad i think health, having a healthy ego uh, it, it's a positive thing it's a positive thing we're humans and uh, it's part of us so throwing it throwing it all away and saying that ego is unim completely unimportant i think is a mistake but at the same time, you need to be careful not to inflate it and, and uh, yeah, that can quickly happen, right? So keeping yourself humble all the time. Humble to the truth and with love for people around. And then a lot of patience. <laughs> patience for yourself, patience for others, acceptance of yourself, acceptance of others. But still keeping in mind to there's a lot more to there's a lot more to you there's a lot more to everyone else around and to keep developing and growing looking back at the artwork um let's see it's slowly yeah it's slowly coming all together now it's all just a matter of um filling all the details in to a similar degree uh, to have it um, sort of unified and um, yeah I'm, I'm trying to add a little bit more um, more interest here and there just trying to find interesting compositions with details uh, focusing on the edges of the of the shells adding uh, this um, elevated edges that I talked about previously to catch the light adding screws screw holes perhaps some material separations um, yeah mo most of them it has been figured out and now it's just uh, it's just a matter of, of completing to similar degree perhaps finding ways to add some patterns lately i've been loving this um uh, adding lines um, diagonal lines or horizontal lines or vertical lines uh, like some form of fabric and and um, uh, or rubber playing more on the on the interior edge side thinking how those in this split split armor in the in, in the 
in the middle could feel fit to the other side and still keeping some variety to the to the to the to the details not just repeating everything the same yeah it's a constant constant search and and sort of uh, questioning yourself what else can i add but at the same time don't want to over detail it and make sense and keep it um, keep a nice flow to it the joints just helping myself with quick alpha and the scapula and yeah like i said even if you use alpha try to uh, try to go into it and still develop it further more cut lines more detail some new materials thinking how this could attach how oblique uh, this oblique part could attach to the um to the middle point it's good to focus on the um on the areas where uh, where you have joints or or on the edges of forms and shapes where things are supposed to attach and focus your detail in those areas and then the surface you leave empty in the middle it creates a logical um, so here here I felt it's um, it's it was a little bit too clustered a little bit too um, A little bit too over detailed and sometimes just focusing on the rule of thirds or the idea that more of something and less of the other <laughs> so keeping the proportion not 50 50 but 70 30 or 80 20 solves a lot of problems that um, that you see in your um, in your designs and in your shapes so yeah from here on out i've been mostly doing um, slight tweaks to to the design slight tweaks to the composition uh, perhaps adding more material separations m more um, trying to find ways to keep it interesting uh, to the eye and um, um, yeah just finding a way to improve to improve the design um, but overall most of it has been figured out at this point yeah also checking symmetry I think that's one thing that I should have done more um, is keeping the the armor um, symmetrical um, I feel like um, the apps area could be a little bit more improved perhaps adding more depth to it detach some of the shells um, and having a little bit more layers uh, but yeah yeah it's always easier to judge looking back but in that moment it's hard to see because you're so into the artwork so used to it you don't see the problems that's why it's, i think it's always nice to have somebody uh, to look at it and just point out um, point out what they think um, yeah especially if you trust them then 
it's a no-brainer to do here I was thinking about the rhythm of um, of the muscles in the back and thought it would be cool to echo this shape um, to have similar shape in the um, in the armor um, you're thinking more about um, material separations sometimes it's easier to paint it in first and then add the cut lines and other times um, I would do a cut line first and then paint it, paint it in yeah it just depends here emphasizing a little bit more of the scapula part uh, and yeah more material separations, more, more ways trying to find something interesting. And from here on out, um, I would. Uh, so le yeah, lately I've been enjoying um, developing. Uh, concepts to this point where uh, you take it quite far in ZBrush everything is kind of clear um, and then you have a peace of mind if you if you want to refine this um, I've been trying ZBrush uh, working with ZBrusher and it's quite cool just keeping everything in single software uh, I think it's kind of freeing But yeah, I would, um, after this, I would just go piece by piece, separate it, clean it up, make really clean mesh and um, add back the details um, and always asking yourself if there's still a way to further improve the artwork and never keep it static, completely static. and doing some small modifications here and there um, going all around and yeah just trying 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 to find ways to improve now how far do you let this go it just depends on you um, where you want to stop I'm adding um, some kit bash parts just thinking um, it would be cool to break up the silhouette a bit trying different options and this could be like a smoke smoke grenade or um, some kind of a sensor yeah different options and um, yeah, I like using kit bash parts, but I like to use them in the end just for um, either medium, but definitely for smaller details. I find it very nice. Um, and there's there's a way with kit bash where um, you can find new stuff, um, and you can still. Uh, modify them especially in ZBrush you can just add stuff to it without a problem just dynamesh it and and um, and you can play with it and find interesting stuff at the same time it's good to keep most of the design original now I'm playing with uh, decals I thought it would be fun to um, add that to further um, to further 
uh, refine it and, and see how the final textured uh, look would be. And at the same time, being aware of um, not overpopulating and not over detailing, which can quickly happen. Now adding some cables. Now, frankly enough, uh, I think this, these cables that I did are not good at all. Um, a bit too boring, I would say. Uh, I could have easily found um, a more interesting, uh, more interesting pattern and composition to those. Uh, perhaps wrapping around the spine a little bit more and some variety in thickness perhaps some big tube inside that would be cool to resemble the um, the uh, digestion system or maybe some cooling system inside internal cooling system Oh yeah, the design is slowly coming to the end, and um, just finding finding moments here and there, checking the symmetry again. Oh, here's the unfinished ribs. <laughs> I wonder how I missed those. Yeah, the back could also be worked more, and the spine. Uh, the spine can be. You can find really interesting uh, patterns in there. Like here, I tried it for a moment, but then, but then didn't go for it. Adding some more screws, some more kit bash parts, some more details here and there. Thinking how the light would catch and break. Adding more cables. Not sure if I keep those. I do, I guess I do. Yeah, just finding little moments, little pockets of, of, of adding further technical stuff uh, to to keep the to keep the interest, to keep the richness, to further emphasize the mechanical aspect, the functional aspect. If you make it believable, then the eye, the mind buys it. The eye sees it, the mind buys it. It's actually pretty hard to talk for hour and a half i uh i have to admit <laughs> it's it's been a bit of a struggle uh, but hopefully with practice with with practice it gets easier and um i can improve uh, i feel like it definitely pushes you to find more content uh, what to, just what to talk about and um yeah thanks for watching everyone thanks for um Thanks for all the support and um, let me know how it was. If you want to see more of this, hear more of me babbling random stuff. <laughs> and um, if you have any topics that you would like to see me discuss, let me know. And um, we'll hopefully make it happen. Cheers.